Hi, I'm Scott Brooksby, your flight instructor for today. I'm going to be flying Cherokee 8675 Whiskey. Cherokee 8675 Whiskey is a Cherokee 235. It has 235 horsepower. Fairly powerful airplane, especially for being a training aircraft. As we do our pre-flight inspection, the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the overall view of the airplane as we walk up. Did the struts look okay? Does it look, look like anybody's banged into the wings? Do our windows look okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look inside. Okay, the first thing we're going to check is our Hobbs time. We're going to write that down. That's the hours that we actually bill for the aircraft. Uh, obviously, if you don't write down your Hobbs time at the beginning, you won't know how many hours you actually flew. If the guy before you didn't write down his finishing time, you get to pay for his flight time because it's the penalty you pay for not having done the job you're supposed to do when you get started. Let's take a look at our checklist. We'll be going through this checklist at the end of today's pre-flight. We're actually going to show you a flow. The flow allows you to systematically check the things that you need to during your pre-flight inspection and then we will come back to the checklist and make sure that we have not missed any of the items. We're going to be going through Aero before we go much further in our flight and Aero stands for Airworthiness Certificate Registration, Radio Operators Permit, Operating Limitations, and Weight and Balance. The Airworthiness Certificate is issued by the FAA and you have to have one of those in order to fly the airplane. The registration must be in the airplane to make sure that uh, it's registered to the proper owner, just like in a car. The second R is for a radio station permit, which is required for the airplane only if it's going to be flown out of country, and since ours isn't, we don't worry about that. The O stands for operating limitations, and that can be from your pilot operating handbook, the limitations uh, provided by the manufacturer, or it can be the markings on your gauges that show you what your airplane is supposed to be doing. The last thing is the W, and the W is for weight and balance. For the weight and balance, we're actually using the calculated and measured weight and balance measured by a mechanic, and then we use that to calculate uh, how much the airplane weighs and what its center of gravity is. You'll be learning that at another stage during the lesson. But Aero, Airworthiness Certificate, Registration, Radio Station Permit, Operating Limitations, Weight and Balance. One of the things that we keep in our uh, aircraft book is the log books, at least the last log entries that show that the airplane actually is airworthy. The inspection that was handled by a mechanic, that inspection must be done annually. If the airplane is used for rental like ours is, it also has to have been done within the last 100 hours. This actually shows where the airframe was e evaluated, the engine was evaluated, and the propeller. The control restraints must be removed before flight. We remove them from the control wheel, and then we reach down and remove them from the rudders. Fold them up and stow them in the back seat. Let's make sure that our avionics master switch is off. All of our other switches are in their off positions, and the master switch is now being turned on. As we turn it on, you'll hear the turn coordinator gyro begin to spin up, and you'll notice that the red flag on the gyro is gone. You'll also notice that we have over 12 volts showing on the battery system. We check our fuel gauges to make sure that they're operating properly and check the amount of fuel we have. Notice that our two tip tanks are empty and our two main tanks have about three quarter tanks of fuel. We'll turn our master switch off make sure our throttle's out, our mixture is out, and we'll raise our flap handle lever, putting the flaps down. We'll then check our controls to make sure that they're operating properly. 
we place our thumb so that it's pointing upwards and we're going to turn our thumb to the left and we look out at our left wing and yes our left aileron is up and we turn and look at our right wing and our right aileron is down now we're going to turn the opposite direction to the right now our right aileron is up and our left aileron is down We're then going to pull back and we look at our elevator in the back and the elevator is in the up position. And we push it forward and the elevator is in the down position. We then look at our rudder. We push our right rudder pedal. Yes, the right rudder works properly. And the left rudder works properly. Okay, now we're going to check this, the fuel sump drain. Pull the seat forward, lift the flap up. This lever right here should be pushed down for three, four seconds. What that has done, it has drained fuel out through the uh, a spigot on the bottom of the airplane and allows us to check and see if there's water or contamination in the system.